Shalom. Hands as you go through it. 
and then this wonderful being came into the picture. Um, yeah, this is my first time working with Sean. I've known Carlos for a while, and yeah, you guys brought me in, and I read the script and immediately fell in love with it. Sean and I are the same age, so we were able to connect a lot over the themes throughout the movie as far as like, being in 2008. Like, that's when we both grew up, so yeah, I'm really excited about it. Honestly, I forgot the last part of the question. <laughs> Protecting the vision as a producer. Just At all costs. Yeah, I mean, like, when you work on independent features, like obviously you might not have all the resources that you need for every single little thing. So it's really important for us to be able to have conversations with Sean and make sure that he's able to portray the vision that he wants and we're able to sit back and say, okay, well like, here's the laundry list of all the things that you want, like let's prioritize and like, we'll make it sure that it makes it happen. And at the end of the day, it has like the same theme and the overall vision. The one thing that he said in the beginning that I think we really did protect at all costs is he said, I would like this production to feel like summer camp. <laughs> and everything that that encapsulates, and I think that we really took that to heart and we just wanted to make sure that the process, you know, the movie's really fun, but it's only fun because the process of making it was. And we wanted everyone in the production, everyone in the, in the cast, to feel like they were really owning this with us. and. That was, I think, really sort of like the guiding principle for all of it. I was just gonna say, if we have time, it might be nice to hear from Shirley about yeah. how she felt that throughout the process because she's an exciting and <laughs> just so much energy on set all the time, so she's the right person to ask this question. Yeah. Question about just <laughs> summer camp. Oh yeah. my gosh, it was so much fun. Um, I definitely think having such a like a wonderful cast of like spry children running around <laughs> is definitely the way to make it feel like summer camp. Um, and then backstage we would like, or behind the scenes we would like do little origami together and um, oh my god yes! We had a wonderful, so I think it was Carlos's idea, we had a talent show um, that we all got to host and like everybody played like good games and like John Boo did like amazing thing on the drums. We did sound. It was Shirley, amazing. Shirley was the host. I was the host. I was indeed the host. Um, but I also think I was looking at photos of Halloween Day too. Like they just they did all these wonderful like themed day events where everybody like cast and crew got to really got to be a part of it. So I think that was really special. Sean peed in the bottle. Yeah, confirmed. What? Oh, did I think Sean? Oh, if I think Sean peed in the bottle or not. I thought we weren't allowed to answer that question. <laughs> I did. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Well, so one of the things I love about this film so much is how precise every detail is. It's like the pipe screensaver and the haircuts. Like, it's just so precise to the, um, the time period. And so I wondered on the costume side if you could speak to kind of creating that, how much research process is going into that and sourcing it. Yeah, um, well, Sean has just done a lot of docs and um, hags, which he made, which is short for Have a Good Summer, um, from, that we all inscribed in each other's yearbooks in like 2008. Um, so I did a lot of yearbook research, actually, and I used Sean's yearbook. I used my own personal yearbook, which was pretty wild for a historical <laughs> movie. Um, but it was really, it was, you know, I think like, I did get some like Seventeen magazines and stuff like that. Um, the thing that struck me so much was that like kids these days have the internet and they have like, you know, you can go and see what any celebrity is wearing at like any moment of the day and so that you can like replicate it really quickly. Um, but we had like an issue of Seventeen magazine once a month and we had like, we had TRL and that kind of stuff, but we we're replicating it stuff at, like we didn't have the internet, and so you're just kind of doing your best. And I think the yearbook research, and I hope it shows on the film, is like I didn't want this to look like Lizzie McGuire or like something that was like really, really pristine, like a Disney movie. Um, I wanted it to look real, and I wanted kids don't know how to dress themselves, and we definitely didn't know how to dress ourselves. Like. If you wore an owl necklace, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I hope that shows here because like, we, and we did a lot of work um, thinking about like how new the clothes were. Like for example, Wong Wong's uh, t-shirts, like when he gets his skate t-shirts, like those were really important that they looked newer well. So the other stuff looked more aged and lived in and some of the other skaters like really trying to age their stuff down. Um, yeah, that's kind of that. I do want to open it up to the audience. Um, there's a lot of hands. <coughs> you right here. Yes. You with the wide eyes. Yes. Okay. Um, 
So my question for Shirley and for Sean, like one of the things that hit me the hardest in the film was the brother and sister relationship in it. Um, I just felt it was so authentic. <coughs> like, did you guys ever have conversations about that? Or like, how did you write that in the screenplay? How did you feel acting it? Like, can you relate to that at all? Question about the brother sister relationship for Shirley and for Sean. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think one of the autobiographical elements, I guess, is I have an older sister who's the same age difference as, you know, uh, Chris and Vivian in the movie. Um, and I think there was a lot there to lean on. I think we were so mean to each other, but it was through that. It was, it's like, it's that, that thing where you're like, it's like even when you're in a relationship and you're like fighting just to fight. It's like, that was our relationship, you know? It's like, we're just mean to each other because that's all we know how to do. And so by the time she left for college, I think I remember there was a moment where it was like, her being nice was her trying to not be mean. And so I think there was just so much of that relationship was trying to, how do we make this honest and emotional but not have it be saccharine? And I think like, that was kind of the challenge of, you know, I think we talked a lot about like, their, their love is like, their fighting is a form of love, it's a form of attention. Um, and then that's kind of what I was leaning on when I was writing it, and then I think throughout production, I introduced Shirley to like all my older sister figures. And... Yeah, I mean, I I got like close to Sean's like real sister, and then also met Vivian, like the, who, like the woman named Vivian, um, which I think was really special. But I think for me, I was thinking a lot about like how do you show love to this creature? Like, you get this glimpse of this creature and this thing and you see this really specific context. Um, um, so like, how do you say you love you without really saying you love you? Which is through like, bitterness and anger. And like, ah! And then a sweet hug. <laughs> Can we hand over there? As such a young filmmaker, can you talk about some of the learning experiences that you had, like on set, just being at the helm of like such a beautiful um, operation? Questions about learning experiences on set. You don't know how old I am. Yeah, well, I think going back to the summer camp vibes, you know, I had the unique opportunity to take this movie to the Sundance Director's Lab five weeks before we shot the movie, and that was something we had to discuss too. It's like, hey, those two weeks are going to eat into your prep time. And I think at the end of the day, I was like, I think the director's lab is prep, which I'm really glad I ended up making that decision because I got to take Shirley and Isaac both up. And basically what you do at the director's lab is you take two scenes that are the scenes that scare you the most or like the most challenging. And for us, it was the family dinner scene in the beginning. And then I did the farting car scene with Isaac. Um, but I think one thing I really learned at the lab was, again, going back to the ethos of this movie, like wanting it to be infused with this energy and this fun. And I sort of realized at the lab that I do my best work when I'm having fun. And like, I remember one of the advisors was like, you're mischievous. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. But I was only able to get there because of the, the environment that the labs created. It was so pure and like, you felt so free to fall and be vulnerable. And they say they're like, your worst day is your best day. And I realized that I was like, this movie is only going to work if I'm having fun, if I'm not like self-conscious about being a director and like doing the right thing, saying the right thing all the time. And that was even on day one too, I think like we were working, it was, we shot Golfland, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, like your motivation is blah, blah, And I was like, I don't need to talk to them like that. They, they're just like, like, no, do it. Like all the things that you're supposed to not do as a director, I think I lean out of that. First, a lot of this stuff, I was like, do it again, do it louder. No, bigger. Like, you're having fun, dude. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, you're just like talking to them like you're a 14 year old. And even with Isaac too, we, because we have him for less time, you know, we had to sometimes shoot him longer than the other kids. So much of my job was like blocking the scene with the other kids before Isaac got there. So I would like be a 14 year old and I'd be like, ah, fuck you, ah. And like, I had to look really stupid in front of an entire crew that I never worked with before. And I think because they saw that I was like, okay with being silly and dumb, that like everybody was sort of okay with, you know, tapping into their 14 year old selves in the best way. Like the sort of, oh, we can, we're, we can dress up and we can do silly things. And I think that kind of went back to the summer camp environment. So I think that's something I sort of really learned is that like my directing style is so intrinsic to having fun and like making sure that the set is fun, 
Um, I don't want to work on a set that's like so hard. <laughs> We have time for only one more, and there's like a million hands. So that you and the bosses, yes. Yeah, so The question was about balancing the cultural elements and maybe whether that was challenging to make it relatable but also or more authentic and specific. No, you know, I think, um, no, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think what I really wanted to do with this movie was not explain anything. You know, it's like this is the family and this is their lives and this is their household. And I think there's something really nice about the barometer of like authenticity being my life. If I like walk on the set and I was like, this feels, you know, because because you do see movies that are like, oh, this is an Asian household, so we're gonna like deck it out and make it look like super Asian and it's like red everywhere and it's like that's not what an Asian American household looks like, at least not mine. And so I would always lean into my own memories. I looked through all of you know our old photos and Han Ray, who production designed the film. You know, we had a lot of conversations about color palette and Sam was a big super shot of the movie. You know, we kind of wanted the house to feel. If the outside world is colorful and big and loud and vibrant and in your face, the home is rooted and locked down and warm and nostalgic and a little uh, stifled. Um, but again, it always just went back to the personal. You know, I was like, this, I mean, that house reminds me of the way my house felt, you know, sort of carpeted floors and um, sort of aged wood. And so, you know, I didn't really think of it as like, we need to design an Asian American household. I thought of it more as like, I need to design the house that I remember growing up in, which was an Asian American household. I want to congratulate you all again on this fantastic show. <laughs> uh,